I have to do the official introduction. You haven't actually been introduced yet. All right, so let, let me do my job. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Preston Campbell has been with the CF Foundation for 20 years and has more than 30 years experience um, providing care for people with CF. Prior to becoming the Foundation's President and CEO in 2015, he served as Executive Vice President for Medical Affairs, leading our drug development and clinical programs at a time of significant progress in the search for a cure. Preston trained as a pediatric pulmonologist and earlier served as a CF Care Center Director at Vanderbilt, where he was also on the medical school faculty. Preston, got some bandy people in the house, all right. <laughs> Preston is passionate about working together with an extraordinary team to fulfill our mission. Thanks, Welcome. Pam. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. So I, f I feel like I'm a little late for my own party, but uh, I got to ask you, how are the jokes? Were the jokes great? They looked, they sounded good. Yeah. How about that? Uh, well, I'm uh, really thrilled to be able to introduce our next speaker. Uh, I think many of you know Joe O'Donnell and know that he's a legend uh, in the field of uh, cystic fibrosis. Joe and Kathy have been at the heart of our community for over three decades. Uh, they created the Joey Fund as a tribute to their son, who they lost in 1986, and in honor of all people uh, with CF. Uh, Joe's a legend because of his passion. He cares. He relates to everyone. He, I, I watched him last night as I came in to the foyer, and he, there were people around him. And the reason people were around him, because uh, he's genuine and he's real. And uh, he deeply cares about you, and he cares about this, this mission. He's raised hundreds of millions of dollars, and you know that he led the Milestone Campaign, which was really the fuel that enabled uh, our therapeutic development program, now called Venture Philanthropy, to move forward. So he had a huge hand uh, in that. He's been a mentor for me, and I'm uh, very thankful to be able to say that he's also uh, a friend. Uh, we're grateful that uh, not only is Joe here, uh, but he's also here with Kate, his daughter. Uh, the next generation of Donalds, hopefully, that will be involved in cystic fibrosis. Kate, it's great to see you here today. Please welcome uh, Doc, uh, Joe O'Donnell to the stage. Thank you. Please, I want you to know I'm very conflicted. I mean, I had my guy introducing me. He was up watching basketball instead. <laughs> instead of introducing me, that's kind of insulting. And he's called me a, called me a legend, and that fits right in with how I feel. I feel old. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I had kind of a tough trip coming out here. Uh, uh, I came out with my daughter, as Preston said, and I felt like a dinosaur 10 minutes into the trip. When we checked in at the airport, she had a cell phone out. I had like 5,000 papers. <laughs> and we ended up, uh, you know, she had that cell phone out the whole time. We came into the hotel, and she had all the reservations and swiped her phone doing all sorts of stuff. And I started feeling really old. And... Then it got worse. <laughs> you know, I, I, when I first came into the, into the building, I looked around and everybody's saying, everybody's saying, wow, I've been doing this since 2007 or 2006. And they're all saying, wow, you're a legend. And that's a, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've been doing this since 1974. Uh, so. And today is so great because I, when I walked in and I saw a room that I was destined to go into, which was the grandparents' room. Uh, <laughs> I am a grandparent uh, uh, recently, and I thought, oh my God, they're telling me something here. So all the grandparents are in here, and then I went around the corner and I saw that little kid, that little girl, with a she had a, I think she was a little girl. She had a, a bow in her hair. She had to be three, four months old, and it occurred to me that we are so unusual. This group of friends is so unusual. I mean, we get a range of like three months to 90 and, and everything in between, and that is so unusual, and it's so 
ridiculously, you know, unique. There are no, uh, no, no other organization, certainly no charitable organization, can do this. Can put this many people in a room, three thousand miles away from base, and basically have the feeling, and you all feel it. I know you do. Uh, that you know this is special and we've made progress and for years we made very tiny incremental tiny progress but that didn't deter all of you and I see so many people that that have been on that journey a long time and the wonderful thing is that 13 that three month old kid is going to grow up to be you know a fighter and hopefully it'll be she'll be fighting some other for some other cause because there are you know, so many problems this community, this community is so unique and has accomplished so much. I want to thank all of you for your incredible generosity, your longevity, your determination that's helped make our unprecedented, really unprecedented progress possible. You know, you're carrying on, all of you are carrying on the unwavering spirit of the remarkable families that came before you and friends who created this movement over 60 years ago. And I was thinking today, how would, because we're all legitimately proud of ourselves and we're also very careful and tentative about finishing this task and destroying this rotten disease. Uh, I was thinking today, these are great days. Who ever thought you could say that? Great days for CF. And of course, that's relative, but basically, you know, the oxymoron nonwithstanding. These will become, these days will become the halcyon days of our battle against this disease. The, VL, the VLC is, is my favorite gathering, and I go to lots of them, uh, of the year. In my travels over the years of all the groups, this is my favorite. You, you are authentic. You are authentic. And you are, as a group, have performed with your actions, your resources, and both your time and your money. It isn't just talk. You perform, and you are authentic. And so that makes so much of a difference in, in the culture of this organization for the last 40 years that I've been involved with it. So rest assured that we know the remarkable progress made to date is a group effort. It doesn't happen without all of you. Uh, there have been many changes, many changes in the last decade, many advances, but no changes in this room. This room is made up of dedicated and unrelenting commitments, and we've established that all of us have established among ourselves, and they've gotten stronger and stronger. And we, this is almost like a reunion, and not to make light of anything, but this is almost like a reunion. I see it, you all see it, people running up to each other. We move out to the West Coast, so we, we leave our little incubator in Washington, and come out here, 3,000 miles, nobody's gonna come. We gotta worry about that, right? Uh, well, unprecedented numbers. We have more people here in this conference than at any time before, and we're in 16 of these things. And hopefully we don't have too many more. But, so I think when we look at this, these relationships are all based on, on what? They're based on community, they're based on trust, they're based on hard work, and they resulted in all of the hope that we have, that big capital letter H, hope, that uh, was now the fruition of many of our dreams. So we're there, some people are there, again, in a relative sense, we're not on the goal line yet. So I think that bond results in just think about this for a second. That results in relationships that we don't, as adults, establish so often. How do you put all these kinds of people in, in a room from all over the country, bonded the way we are? So we're unique in that regard. And compared to every other charitable organization in the hemisphere, there's no one else. And I talk to a lot of foundations, a lot of charitable things. They want to know, how do you do it? How did you folks do that? How did you create venture philanthropy? How did you uh, persuade all these people in the abyss of, 
of the despair that we all had because it was a long time. There's a 25 year period that, you know, we were waiting for the gene and then the gene got discovered in 1989. And what happened then? It got worse. It got more complicated. And we were all saying, oh my God. You know, so my son died in 1986. In 1989, I remember talking to Francis Collins and, and thinking, I, I was never so depressed because I, I felt bittersweet, obviously. I, I thought Joey could have lived longer. But what happened was the, the, the analysis of the gene was it was more complicated. It took another decade. So there was a lot of up and down to that, and people were feeling really difficult uh, in dealing with that. So 10 years ago, just think about where we were. We never heard of Vertex. We never heard of VX770, remember that? Or 809, or Kaleidico, or Cumbi, or Cambi. My daughter corrects me all the time. I, it's easier to say a combi. <laughs> so we all knew about Toby and the fact that the great Dr. Bell, who was fantastic, I thought, kept talking about pipelines. You know what a pipeline is? I, and I didn't know what a pipeline was. And he'd, I'd have a, you know, we'd have a, a gathering, uh, sometimes like this back in Boston or in Washington, and he'd get up and kill my crowd. It, uh, is it Summer Love? Where is she? <laughs> you, you can fill in any time, but he, he wasn't exactly Summer Love. He'd get up there with 29, 29 pipelines, <laughs> and the crowd would be going like, like, like this, and I'd be saying, no, no. And then he'd hold up his little blue pills, and it, you know make a funny joke, he thought. And, and it, but he was magnificent. He was the guy who basically gritted it right through. And Rich Mattingly, every one of you who have been around for a while, know and love Rich Mattingly. I had... <laughs> I had dinner with him two weeks ago, and he's, he's remarkably recovered from the tragedy that he had, and he's doing, he's doing fine. He wanted to say hello to everybody, because this will always be his family. Uh, so all of these things, you know, lead to a realistic hope for all of us in the community that there is a treatment. Right now there's a treatment for 90% of our population. We don't dare say a cure. We don't dare say the $4 billion we have, which we, were, we earned uh, with a lot of hard work and determination and some luck. That money may not last forever. So we need to confront that. We need to understand that. We need to prepare for going forward. We've had a bunch of workshops and symposiums here, and we all have great expectations, but we need to hedge that bet, and we're going to do that. So now we sit here not 10, ten years later, and the foreign concept of venture philanthropy is proven, and we are an international model. Nobody can duplicate this thing. You know why? Because we don't have, they don't have the roots, the grassroots, all the way up to the leadership of people basically refusing to say, I quit. And I've watched that for 46 years, and I've seen it from different, different angles. And remember, 25 of those years was a dark hole with no hope. So today, after what has to be tens of thousands of meetings and fundraisers and symposia and caucuses, we stand on the precipice of a cure for all the rest of our patients. So do we dare dream about the next three years? You bet we do. And basically, we are, along with all of you, making that dream. So yes, while these are very encouraging times, and they are, that's for sure, we're not there yet. And basically, it's been said many times tonight, uh, Pam said it, Mark said it, uh, and I'm saying it, that we're not there yet. And as the irrepressible President Campbell, that fabulous leader that we have, we have not finished the journey yet. So I'm not here to say, let's worry about the journey. I mean, I am here to say we need to continue to work hard. And just like 10 years ago when we embarked on the first Milestones campaign, we need to continue the battle. There is more to do. And we are on the goal line. I'm a jock, so I love those. <laughs> we are on the goal line. 
and basically we need one last push to win this fight. And rest assured, push we will do, and we are going to, and we will win this battle. So the foundation, think of it this way, the foundation is committed to providing the best possible resources to see our families. Now, capital letters, now, resources like expanded, and we've said it all today, you've heard it before, and many of you live it, basically support uh, for expanded care center services and staff, more patient resources for coping with the health care system, greater attention to mental health issues, things that we never thought about before, five years ago, and better support for individual patients, particularly adults. And tomorrow, what happens tomorrow? When I walked in, I walked past the grandfather's and grandmother's room, escaped by it, and right next to that was the room my daughter was heading for after she made me feel like I was 150 years old, not on purpose, but basically the young leaders jammed. The room was jammed, and I've talked to a bunch of them, and you all have. That's the future, and they're going to take over and make sure this is done. And then finally, the, the clear message that you need to make to your friends and families who are still struggling, and we know there are a lot of them, tell them they're not alone, that tonight and tomorrow and yesterday at night and sometimes during the day, there are events all over the country. You all do. You're all part of that. So they're not alone and know that the progress is real. These are actual results. You know, these are, this isn't a maybe in the future like we live with for so long. And most importantly, know that while we certainly don't know when the battle is finally over, we're winning. And we're winning in an unprecedented way. So, not so long ago, it used to be a message of despair, frustration, confusion, is now one of capital H, hope. And that's what drives all of us. And while all of you parents and friends who have worked for that, and for some are still in that race against the clock, we understand that and we will not give up. So thank you for all you do and what you continue to do. And thank you for believing in this great, this great organization. And thanks especially for redefining for all those people, for ourselves, the meaning of hope for a cure and not just increased longevity for the hundreds and thousands of not just patients but the extended families and friends who depend on us. So we're going to continue this battle. We will succeed. We are going to succeed. And we will do all and we will all live to witness the, the end of this madness. And then we'll celebrate again, you know, one last time. But we'll always be friends forever. Thank you. Joe, I want to say on a personal level, meeting you at my first VLC was one of the strongest motivating factors to push me to be the volunteer that I am and stand on this stage. And for you first timers that are here, this man is a legend. He's a hero. And he, he gave this organization a chance in some dark times with the work that he did. So we will continue to fight in your honor and your path and make you proud. So thank you, Joe. Oh. We now invite conference attendees to take this time to break before cocktail reception. <laughs> for our corporate supporters, please join us for a reception in the Shoreline Restaurant and Lanai Lawn, Lawn, Lanai Lawn, they're trying to mess me up with these names. The Shoreline Restaurant in Lanai Lawn at 5.30 p.m. All others, please join us for a cocktail reception on the Bayview Lawn, which is probably lesser. <laughs> That's where I'll be. Live stream will pick up again at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time with our annual awards dinner. We hope you will join us. Thanks, guys. <laughs>